on example four, we want to find the area of each of these regular polygons. So we have a regular triangle, otherwise known as an equilateral triangle, regular uh, quadrilateral, a square. We've got a regular hexagon, a regular pentagon, and each of them gives us maybe the apothem length, maybe the radius length, something like that. We want to be able to find the area using our nifty formula. Area is equal to one half the apothem length times the perimeter. All right, so I have conveniently copied this down here, so I have uh, enough room to actually work each one of these problems on example four. All right, so I'll take you through the steps as I would suggest that you do them, and that is draw in a central angle here. So this central angle here, in order to get its measurement, I take 360 and I divide it by three, because there's three sides of my triangle, right? Three central angles, if I drew in all of them, not that I need to, is 120 degrees. So I got a 120 degree angle right there. The apothem, which is marked as six right here, is gonna split that 120 degree angle in half. It's gonna bisect it, where each one of them is 60, which of course creates a 30, 60, 90 right triangle right there. Totally convenient because it's pretty easy to solve a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And that is, I have the apothem length, it's six. It gives us the radius as 12. We don't actually need it. What we need down here is the length of the longer side of the 30, 60, 90 right triangle, where you just take the short leg, six, and multiply it times the square root of three. All right, but in our formula, remember it is area is equal to one half the apothem times the perimeter. In order to find the uh, perimeter, I need to find the side length. So to find the side length, I just double this 6 times the square root of 3. So it's 2 times 6 square root of 3, which, of course, is equal to 12 times the square root of 3, where you just multiply the two numbers like their coefficients. All right, let's plug our stuff into our formula. 1 half of the apothem length, the apothem was 6, times my perimeter, and my perimeter is going to be 3, times each one of my side lengths, which is 12 square root of 3. All right, let me just kind of quickly highlight each one of these pieces. That 6, that's the apothem. And 3 times 12 square roots of 3, that is the perimeter. All right, and now we just want to use... Uh, some arithmetic and just clean this up a little bit, make it look pretty. Like, for example, inside the brackets for the perimeter, I get 36 squared of 3, just multiplying the 3 and the 12 together. On the outside, taking half of the 6, I get 3. And then 3 times 36 is, let's see, 90 plus 18 is 108 square roots of 3. And you can leave it in exact form like this, but I would ask that you throw in a unit squared, since it is, in fact, area. All right, there you go. Let's move on to the square. This one's going to be the toughest of all. Absolutely. Okay, so if I did the same kind of thing that I did before, again, I'm going to go ahead and preface this with the fact that this is complete overkill for the square. Um, I would have 360 degrees divided by 4 to get 90 degrees for each one of these central angles, 90 degrees. And then if I draw in another one of these, all of that 90 degrees gets split in half to get 45. And there is my 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And then we can see pretty easily that this side length down here is a 4. And the length of the radius would be 4 times the square root of 2. Do I need it? No, we sure don't need it. However, I do need the side length, and that side length is double that 4. I get 8. So the area here, 1 half of the apothem length, which was 4, times the perimeter, well, I've got 4 sides, and each one of those sides is 8. All right, right, right. And uh, whenever I go to clean this thing up, I get 1 half of, well, I'll just take half of that, and that is uh, 2 times 32, which is... 64 units squared. Yeah, but 
Couldn't we have stopped a long time ago and got 64? Like, for example, we already figured out, dang it, we already figured out that the side length is 8, and if I just take that 8 and square it, certainly I get 64 units squared right there. Surely you sure can do that. It's perfectly acceptable. All right, let's look at the uh, regular hexagon. Regular hexagon. All right, let's do our process here. If I were to draw in a central angle, 360 degrees divided by 6 gives me 60. There's our equilateral triangles. And then the apothem length, which is 10 squared to 3, is going to cut that angle in half, giving me 30. And there's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Just oriented in a different way from, hey, let's maybe mix it up a little bit. How about an orange? Oh, man, that orange and that blue really, really pops. Complementary colors. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's still a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but it's oriented differently than the one that we had for the equilateral triangle. It's okay. Still pretty easy to solve. Uh, the other thing that I need, I've got the apothem length. I just need this little side piece that's down here, and it should be 10. Right? It's either half of that hypotenuse length, which is the radius, or it's this number that's being multiplied times the square root of 3, which means that the whole entire side length is double that, which is 20. And again, as I pointed out before, whatever the side length is, that's the same thing as the radius or vice versa, exclusively for the regular hexagon. All right, I think that we have enough information to find the area of this regular hexagon. It's one half. The apothem length, which was 10 times the square root of 3, times my perimeter, and my perimeter is, I've got six sides, and each of them are 20. All right, so let's do some simplification. There would be 5 inside here. That's 120, let's say. And then 5 times 120, that'd be 500 and... Let's see, uh, plus 100 more, that's 600, yeah, 600, there we go, 600, don't forget about this guy, square root of 3, and then throw in your units, units squared, 600, square root of 3, units squared. All right, we have one more, and it is the regular pentagon. Now, strictly speaking, the regular, all of these actually gave us more information than we needed. The only one that gave us one piece of information was the one with the square. Like, we could have gotten by with only the 6 or the 12. We could have figured out the rest of it on the triangle. Likewise, if they had just given us the 20 or the 10 squared of 3, we, we still would have been able to figure it out. The same thing should happen right here. But notice that whenever we draw in the right triangle, uh, it's already given us two pieces. And it's not a special right triangle, and I know it's not a special right triangle because I can do the little central angles here. If I draw in a central angle and I take 360 and divide it by 5, I get 72 degrees. So this is 72 degrees. And then if I cut that in half, I get 36. So for the right triangle, this time, what color should we choose? Purple. What's going on here? I don't know what happened to my 36. I'll fix that in a second. 36. Okay, it's not a special right triangle. But we do have two sides, and uh, that means that we could just use the Pythagorean theorem on it. Let me just call this side down here x. Now, I'm going to show you in just a little bit that this 6.5 is actually rounded. So we're going to do the we're going to redo this problem in just a minute. See, I've made some space down here where we get rid of that 6.5. We get rid of that rounded number, and we just work with the 8 as the radius, and we can still figure the whole thing out. But as it sits right now, they gave us two pieces of information. That's enough to use the Pythagorean theorem on that right triangle. I would have x squared plus 6.5 squared should be equal to 8 squared. Uh, x squared is x squared. 6.5 squared is some number, which the calculator will tell me is 6.5 squared is 42.25 equals 64 when I square the 8. 
and now subtract over your 42.25 to get someplace in the 20s. So uh, 64 minus the second answer, I think that's under here, yeah, is 21.75. And then the last step, of course, is to take the square root. So our x is the square root of 21.75, and I'll just leave it like that for right now. And that is exactly half of the whole entire side length. So the side length down here needs to be two times that big. So it's two times the square root of 2175. Okay, so now then I think that we have enough information to figure out the area of this guy. One half of the apothem, it's giving us this weird rounded number of 6.5. We'll just go with it. Times the perimeter. The perimeter, there are five sides. And each one of those sides is 2 times the square root of 21.75. Okay. All right, then. Uh, maybe whenever I go, since this is all multiplication here, I can take half of the 2 that's right out front there. And then uh, 6.5 times 5 is 32.5. Whoa, this needs to go back to being blue. Times the square root of 21.75. This would be an exact answer. There's no point in getting an exact answer on this one since it's rounded anyway. Let's just throw all of that into the calculator. So the 32.5, we're going to multiply times the square root of 21.75 to get approximately equal to, let's see, 151 points. I'll round that to 57. One fifty one point fifty seven, I think it was, perhaps, and then throw in our, well, I don't need, yeah, okay, that's better. Throw in our unit squared. Okay, again, just an approximate answer here, and the reason why it's approximate because we put these square roots in it, but also because this apothem length was rounded. So let's redo this problem because it's never enough. It is never enough to do a problem just once you got to do it two or three times. Let me scroll back up here. So let's redo this problem, but now act as if the 6.5 does not exist. Get rid of it. And now all we have is that radius of 8. Okay, and this is going to be a more useful kind of general technique that you would use in order to figure out the area of one of these regular polygons that, you know, doesn't work out to be a nice 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So the process is this. I draw in my central angle just like before. I'm pretty sure we already found it as 72 degrees, which makes this angle here our 36 degrees. Color in our right triangle nicely. And uh, remember that we're just going to call that an A, ignoring the 6.5, A for our apothem. And I have my uh, 8 for the length of the radius here. So I've got a right triangle in which I know an angle and I know one of the side lengths, I can use trigonometry in order to figure out the length of the apothem here. So I just have to figure out which ratio is it going to be. Is it going to be sine? Is it going to be cosine? Is it going to be tangent? So I'll label my sides. The 8 is the hypotenuse, and the A, conveniently, is the adjacent side. So what do I have? I have another hour. Another hour is cosine. I've got the cosine of 36 degrees is equal to my adjacent side, which I don't know what it is, I'll call it A, over my hypotenuse, which is 8. And this is one of those where, in order to solve for A, I just multiply the 8 over. So my apothem is equal to 8 times the cosine, ooh, times the cosine of 36 degrees. Let's put that into the calculator. Remember, it said 6.5, and that like I was saying, is a rounded number. It should have been irrational. And uh, let's see what it says. 8 times the cosine of 36 degrees, and I'll approximate that. Dang it, this is in radians. When you get a number like that, it's a pretty, pretty uh, clear clue that you're in the wrong angle measurement. All right, so there, and then hit done. And now let me just hit approximately equal again. There we go, 6.5. 472. You can see that it does round to 6.5 approximately. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, 
So we're just going to leave it like this for the purposes of this problem. What else do I need? I have the apothem. Do I have the side length so I can find the perimeter? I don't. So I will call it x. You could use the Pythagorean theorem like we did right up here. Or since we're focused on trig, we might as well just keep going with it. Okay. Now, um, I would go back, if I'm trying to find both sides, both sides of the triangle, I would go back to the original 8 here, which is the hypotenuse, and now the 36 is directly opposite from the x, so this is the opposite side here. So opposite and hypotenuse, that's, oh hell, that is sine. Sine of 36 is equal to my opposite side, which I decided to call an x, over my hypotenuse, which is 8, just like before, the 8's on the bottom, so it can just multiply over. So x is equal to 8 times the sine of 36. All right, but then I'm going to have to double it so I can find the whole entire side length. So if I double 2 times 8 times the sine of 36, I just multiply these 2 and this 8 together to get uh, 16 of them. 16 sine of 36. That's how big each one of those sides is. Okay, finally, we're ready for the area formula. One half of the apothem length, the apothem is, we discovered, 8 times the cosine of 36 degrees, whoop, times my perimeter. I've got five of these sides, and each one is 16 times the sine of 36 degrees. Right, right, right. All right, and now let's uh, clean stuff up here. I'm, I think that I'm. what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, let's say, half of 8, and that'll make 4 here. And then I got 4 that I can multiply times the 5. That'll be 20. And now 20 times the 16. How about 2 times 16 is a 32? And then times 20 would be 320. Okay, so this must mean that the area is equal to 320. And then I still have each of these trig functions. The sine... Oops, the cosine of 36 times the sine of 36. Guess what? That's an exact answer. It's an exact answer in the same kind of way that 600 times the square root of 3 is an exact answer. You could throw a unit squared on it as an exact answer, but let's just compare it. I'll put it into the calculator so we can compare it to this 151.56 that we got from the apothem that they gave us. So we got 320 cosine and sine. 320 times the cosine of 36, get out of it, times the sine of 36. And then let's approximate that. And we get 152, 152.6169. Oh, so yeah, we're off by a little bit. 162, 152.17. and compare it with this one, you can see it's off by a little bit. And you should expect that whenever you're doing things with some sort of rounded number, which is one of the reasons why in math we always, always suggest that if you have to do some rounding for your problem, when should you do it? You should wait until the end because you do a rounding here and then you perform operations on that rounded number, you're getting further and further and further away from what should have been the exact answer.